In today's sales training, we're going to talk about how to use the third party approach, what scenarios to use it in, and why it works so well. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mona, and I talk about a lot of sales and business related topics. So if you like learning about sales and business, click subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Let's get into it. Now, what is the third party approach? Very simply, what that means is that if I am your sales rep and you always hear from me or we are always in contact, then bringing in a third party to talk to you can be really anybody from somebody in my company, maybe somebody that's a bit higher than me, maybe my manager, maybe somebody from a different department or maybe another client that has had a lot of success with my product or service that I'm trying to get you to purchase. So anybody essentially that has some type of clout that is not me is considered a third party to you as the potential customer. Now, I'll give you a different scenario just to kind of let it sink in. Just drop a comment below if this scenario is familiar to you. If you have kids and you've ever told them to do literally anything, clean up your toys, for example, clean up your toys, maybe you tell them five times, eight times, 10 times, clean up your toys. <laughs> and then your neighbor comes over or a family member or a friend and they look at them once and they say, you should clean up your toys. And your kid actually starts cleaning up their toys. What do you do? If you're anything like me, you do this. <laughs> what just happened here? <laughs> like, I literally told you to clean up your toys like 10 times, no exaggeration. They came in and said it once. What's going on? Here's what's going on. On a psychological level, your child heard you. On a psychological level in sales, that prospect, they heard you. They heard what you were saying, they heard your pitch, they heard all the benefits and the, the features of your product and why they should sign up with you. They heard you. But when that third party came in, what that did is it reconfirmed everything you were saying by somebody that very simply put, wasn't you. That's on a very basic level that's how simple it is. Now there's a lot of psychology behind this and it's actually a very, very deep rooted psychological phenomenon, but on a basic level, that's all it is. They heard the same information again from somebody that's not you. That's all it was. And sometimes that's really painful because you're like, <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> I've been saying that for months. <laughs> Why did you listen to me? But they will eventually listen if you bring in a third party, depending on the scenario. The second reason that this works is that depending on who the third party is, they could potentially just have a lot more influence than you. So it's not necessarily that it's just somebody else. It could actually be depending on who that third party is. So if it's somebody that's very well known, or if it's somebody that was using your service and they're very, very happy and they happen to know that person. So let's say, for example, you work with uh, owners of IT companies and you bring in one of your existing clients who owns another IT company and they are happy to share their experience with a new prospect. And these two prospects know each other, or they at least they know of each other's companies. That means that that third party that you brought in has a very high influence on this new potential prospect for you, simply because they know of the company. So this is an extremely powerful third party for you because it really validates what you have been trying to say this entire time to that prospect. So when are the best times to bring in a third party? There's a few times that you can really use this to your advantage. The first time is if that prospect is very simply just not responding to you. Either they've disappeared 
or they just generally they take too long to get back to you or they're kind of lingering where, with their decision. This is a great time to bring in a third party. The second time that you want to consider doing this is when you've actually come very, very close to the closing stage, but you feel like there is something missing or the prospect is on the fence for some reason and you just need that little bit of third party influence to get them over the fence. And the third scenario that you can use this tactic is if the prospect is overcomplicating it and maybe they have analysis paralysis or they are just asking too many really detailed questions that aren't necessarily applicable or they're creating problems that don't really exist and they're really just overcomplicating things. So this is when you can really use that third party tactic to get them to kind of calm down, take a step back, let's simplify it again. And in this scenario, you have to make sure that the third party, generally that third party should be from your company, like your manager or somebody above you. They have to put some kind of urgency on it because if you're dealing with that type of personality, somebody that complicates things, they cannot be allowed to think too much longer. They have to make a quick decision and that third party that you bring in needs to be able to put that urgency on them. And there's a lot of different ways that that can be done, even over the phone. And if you want some ideas on that, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you like this sales training by hitting the like button and share this with somebody else in sales that maybe has used the third party tactic, but maybe in not the way that I just described. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do so now and I will see you in the next video.